In the second stream, we are looking to testing in a more specialized form. First of all, we are fuzz testing. What does it mean? In form-based applications, this would be the equivalent of going in each form field and confirming that the application doesn't fail if it gets garbage inputs. Ultimately, what you want is your input validators to capture the garbage input and produce informative errors that the input has been invalid and discarded and continue processing normally. If something triggers the application to end up in an unknown state, that's not a good thing. So fuzzing is an automated way of verifying whether or not the applications are susceptible to disruptions. Abuse test cases are reflecting on the attacker behavior where we focus on finding unexpected design flaws and implementation bugs. It's about figuring out how the mechanism works and how one could disable it. Again, we're talking about security controls. Finally, denial of service attacks tests and resilience testing is about looking how our system is resilient against denial of service and other resource exhaustion attacks and making sure the whole system keeps on working even if it is under a DOS attack. At level one, the question is, are you fuzzing? And the quality criteria here are pretty straightforward. And if you are fuzzing, it's typically a yes answer. So you need to cover most input parameters. If you, are just, if you have a form with 100 inputs and you're just fuzzing one of them, you probably cannot count this as a yes answer. And you also need to record and inspect all application crashes. But you can do that on a best effort basis. Note that this is one of the few streams where the security activities across the three maturity levels are not really building on top of each other. So at level two, this is where security experts need to identify what the abuse cases are. As you can see, this is not related to fuzzing. So fuzzing is sort of an independent thing that you should be doing. A pen test might be meaningful to identify those uh, abuse cases for important business features, by the way. Thinking like an attacker is not a simple thing to do. So at level two, you need to have more specialized knowledge and most teams have to bring someone outside, outside the team. For larger organizations, it is actually a great idea to share the abuse cases as they might be a great source of inspiration. And you are going to capture weaknesses as security requirements. Level three is about performing denial of service and security stress testing. And it actually combines two different subtopics. The first one deals with pure load testing of your application, it is related to the scalability aspect. Remember, security is CIA triad, where A stands for availability. So in a more positive scenario where the user base grows, you want to make sure that your application remains scalable and availability is not affected. The second part is more related to resource exhaustion. So if a certain process can quickly exhaust your resources by hogging CPU, then you should make sure that that doesn't break the rest of your application for the legitimate users. If there is, for instance, a heavy export functionality in your application, you need to make sure that someone, especially someone who is not authorized and authenticated, cannot trigger that functionality so many times that it's going to just break your server or whatnot. The quality criteria here are targeting specific application resources and designing your tests around relevant personas. So exactly what I was mentioning, think about 
malicious users who could do specific things to uh, break your whole application and server. And then you need to make sure that there is a feedback loop to design practices. If you have found that an export functionality could bring down your whole server, then the design and the designers need to make sure that that export functionality should run in a batch, uh, for instance, or there should be some additional controls around it. 